Hey friends, it is mid-July and this is a bit of a sad day. This has never happened before. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey darling, we could get out of town. See the beautiful world around, wanna see it now. Pack our bags and get in that car. Leave a little note and we'll drive real far. Let's get out. Um, so let's let's talk about what's going on. But first, I do want to show you the beautiful, beautiful kitchen garden because that is not struggling the same way and uh, my climbing roses are just blooming like so well right now so let me show you guys those so we've got this beautiful tangerine skies climbing rose over here on this side and then on the other side I have my David Austin climbing rose just got one bloom right now so pretty and then I have another David Austin right there and another one right there and then just check out this kitchen garden. We've got gorgeous zinnias blooming. So lovely. Tomatoes, Japanese beetle. Right now I'm just gonna flick it off because I don't want it on my okra. Okra is gonna be blossoming soon. So exciting. We've got squash that's meandering its way through here and sunflowers. these sad looking tomatoes which I'll tell you about in a minute great germination on carrots okay so I spent like 30 minutes walking around the garden assessing the damage before bringing you guys in and showing you what's going on essentially we've had an insane amount of rain over the past two weeks what we probably had seven eight inches of rain probably yeah we've had so much rain and it's not like it's been like you know an inch a day it's been like like last night alone yesterday alone we got three and a half inches of rain um two weeks ago before we left for maine we had three and a half to six inches i don't know how many um in like one night basically and the garden is essentially dying <laughs> like some things are surviving but most things are dying and it's just because they can't handle that level of moisture our soil is very heavy clay and normally um, with the no-till methods that we use we're able to handle uh, and manage our soils so that we have a healthy garden but this year it's just too much for the plants to handle and so all the tomatoes almost all the tomatoes pretty much all of them are just completely dying and it's mid-july so we haven't really even harvested any yet um, the beans look like they have a disease. The ground cherries are like ravaged with uh, t tomatillo beetles or the three-lined Colorado potato beetle. Our potatoes were ravaged by potato beetle this year. Um, and of course we have our normal issues like squash bugs and vine borers and you know all of those things, the cabbage moths. But on top of that this year we're having so much fungal disease on so many of our plants. So I'll just show you a little bit of what the tomatoes look like. Cause that's our um, biggest, most harmed crop. Okay, so here's the garden. Got some volunteer potatoes over here and um, lots of things going to seed. Artichoke plants, uh, carrot that's gone to seed and tomatillos and cabbage and some things look great. Um, this artichoke plant is looking a little rough because that, that artichoke just got fungal from all the rain. Some think something's fungal. But here's where we get sad. This right here going on is late blight. You can see it started off, we started off with septoria leaf spot. You can see it on the stem down there and on the leaves and then we got late blight which looks like looks like this and eventually very soon these plants are going to be completely dead and there's so much fruit so 
what am I gonna do? Well, I've already tried saving the plants. I've cut off all the dead leaves multiple times. I've cut off all the diseased leaves multiple times. That hasn't stopped the spread. I even sprayed with an organic copper fungicide to hopefully slow the spread. That didn't stop it. So right now, what I'm doing, I think I'm gonna let these stay in for a little longer just to see if the fruit ripens, the mature fruit ripens. And then what I'll do after the mature fruit starts ripening, starts blushing, I'm gonna pull it while it's blushing, let it ripen inside, and I'm going to take out all these tomato plants. Um, I'm going to leave any that are salvageable. I think we have one or two that may be salvageable. These two in here look okay. I don't see a lot of disease on them. So I'm gonna leave these two in here, but as we work our way down, it doesn't look horrible, but it's it's still, I mean, we got Septoria leaf spot on there, down there. Um, but then I've got late blight right here. So basically everything, I'm gonna save, I think, I think these three in here are gonna be salvageable and then everything else is gonna get pulled out. So to protect the, the plants that are potentially salvageable, I'm gonna keep applying the copper fungicide every seven days. So I just applied it the other day, so I'll apply it again um, in a week or so. And I do have a whole new batch of tomato plants that I'm gonna go ahead and put in where the garlic is. The ground is super saturated right now, so I'm probably not gonna be able to plant those until maybe at least tomorrow. It's like wet, like I'm walking around guys and it's sopping wet. We have so much, we just had so much rain. Um, Part of me wishes we didn't even have a garden this year because not having a garden would maybe feel better than having put so much work and so much of my heart into this space and just watching so much of it die. I think it's hard to see from a distance in this video. You know, you see the corn looks lovely and that's a win, right? Um, and we do, we did get a lot of produce already out of the spring garden. But I think this year I just feel like everything is telling me to stop gardening because we had the leek moth, which just like, totally damaged our garlic and onion crop last year and then probably did so again this year we'll fill you in on that depending on how our garlic harvest goes um so the leek moth like totally changed my plans of being able to have a, our garlic a garlic farm and then we had the rain the rain which is just wiping out all the things that i put you know so much so much of my energy into like all the tomatoes surprisingly the peppers are handling it okay um i don't see any disease in the peppers which i've never had pepper disease so i mean i'm hopeful that we won't have disease and we've got tons of fruit large dark green beautiful plants so i guess maybe this year i'll just hope for a beautiful pepper year and I decided today that I'm just gonna switch gears. I'm gonna focus on ripping out all the diseased plants and really putting my heart and energy into a fall garden because summer wasn't our year. Uh, it just wasn't a good summer garden. You know, that's like the, the pride of most gardeners um, space, right, is the summer garden where you have your tomatoes and your peppers and all those wonderful, hot, heat-loving plants. And this year, it just wasn't. It wasn't the year for that. So let's go ahead and we're gonna pull out the garlic so I can make way for my new tomato plants so that they can get in the ground because they are sad, sad plants. They've been in their containers for way too long. I got all of them for free, so I decided to grab them. The one area of my garden that's looking beautiful is this bean trellis right here. It's just the one spot I love right now. It's just like overflowing with green plants. So all this garlic in here, all that garlic over there is all coming out. We've got a bunch of garlic over there. I'm gonna start, I'm gonna work my way from the front to the back. So let's get, let's get started in here with the soft neck garlic, which is buried by a bunch of volunteer potatoes. Baby, it's a big dark world. You don't need to know about that. Don't need to know about that. I'll protect you with my lies. You don't need to know about that.
mid-July and even though I have hardly even harvested from these tomatoes yet, they are all coming out, which I've never had to do this before, but this year has been something and I am pulling out a lot of the garden and I'm starting over. So I'm gonna get all these tomatoes out. They're completely dying of late blight, which not only kills the plant, but also really damages the fruit. So we're gonna pull out all these plants and I have some more tomatoes to plant. We'll see if I can get anything from a second planting of tomatoes, something I've never done before. Yeah. 